Hey, my name is Eric Nelson. I'm an engineer on the MTC project. And in this video, we're going to be showing the demo migration of a sample application called SockShop. It's a uh, relatively complex application um, that's stateful. So it has a bunch of uh, PVs that are in use and uh, a number of microservices that make up a um, shopping application. So uh, I'll also link a, um, I'll, I'll put a link to the repository with all of our sample applications in the description of the video so you can go see them yourself and play around. So up top in my terminal you can see I have an OCP4515 cluster. That's going to be my target cluster and on the bottom I have an OpenShift 311 cluster and in that cluster is where my SockShop app is running. So my goal is to migrate my SockShop to um, my OpenShift 4 cluster to get me off of 3. So up top, I, you can see I uh, grep for the namespace and the sock shop is not there. And on the bottom, I've got a lot of, of pods running that make up my app. So I'm going to grab the route um, for the sock shop and navigate over here to my browser. And you can see this is on the OpenShift 3 um, route. So that's serving me the UI. If I come in here, this is the cart. So this is my sample workload and I want to put it on my four cluster. So in, in my MTC, um, I have a three and a four cluster and I have my intermediary repository registered. And I'm ready to create a plan. So if I come in here and I add sock shop, create a plan name, I'll choose the uh, three side as my source cluster and I'll choose the four side as my target cluster. And then I'm gonna select my intermediary uh, S3 bucket so here you can see um, all of my possible workloads to move off my three cluster. I have a sock shop um, that has 14 pods. So I'm gonna select that and move forwards. It's discovering the persistent volumes that are in use by the application right now. And it's gonna give me some recommendations. So I have a few options here. I can either copy or move them. Copying uh, these persistent volumes is a file system copy rather than an NFS move. And then I also have the option of selecting my target storage class. So here um, I have Ceph and EBS uh, available to me. So I'm gonna select Ceph. I also have an option of a volume snapshot, but um, here, because uh, I'm using set, going from EBS to Ceph, I'm just going to choose a file system copy. Here we have hooks. Uh, it's another feature of MTC we'll cover in another video, but that lets me run uh, hook into the process and run custom logic uh, during the phases. So my plan has been validated um, and it's ready to migrate. If I go into the namespace view, I can see that I've got 119 Kubernetes objects I need to move uh, that make up the sock shop. Um, I also have four PVCs and uh, those total 40 gig of capacity. So that doesn't necessarily mean I have 40 gigs of data to move, but I have 40 gigs of potential capacity. I don't have any custom images that I'm moving here, although the tool is capable of moving your custom internal images. So here I have a few options to do on my, to execute on my plan. I have a stage and a migrate. Stage lets me ahead of time move my data over without quiescing my source application, so I can pre-stage the data. But for this purpose, I'm just going to select migrate. So this is prompting me um, whether or not I'd like to actually quiesce my source workload. Um, and in this case, I do actually want to quiesce it, which means scale to zero, because I want to capture all of my data. So I've kicked off the migration here, and you can see that it's uh, entering the pre-backup hook. So this is the very beginning of the migration. And I can follow the status and the phases as it continues forwards. Um, in our next release, we're going to be uh, improving the status reporting greatly. So if I choose the debug option here, I can see all the objects that the controller is creating on the source and the destination cluster that um, compose a migration. So I can view the JSON of a backup and I can see the total uh, items and the items backed up. So that's the raw progress. And that's where our progress in the UI is derived from. So now the initial backup has been created in our source cluster. Um, this portion of the video is a little bit sped up uh, just for the sake of time and we've created our stage pods. Um, so the stage pods are the mechanism that we use to mount the um, PVs so that we can move the data over while the application has been quiesced so we can ensure that there's no conflicting data being written or we're missing anything in flight. And you can see that we've got our four PVCs here, each of a 10 gig capacity. And now the controller is ensuring that the source application has been quiesced. So um, it's gonna sit here and spin for a little bit while it waits for everything to terminate um, so it can be uh, confident that it can proceed. So now we've created our stage backup. There are a few different uh, backups and restores that are created. So um, 
One is uh, one's purpose is to move over the Kubernetes objects, and the other is to move over the images and the um, PV data, your state. So just refreshing the page here, this is on the source cluster. You can see the application is down. So this is the router page. There's nothing responding behind it. And I can see my two backups uh, here that make up um, as we move our data into the intermediary repository. So I can see 15 of 15 items have been backed up in my uh, backup, in my stage backup. And so we're ensuring that it's been replicated on the target side now um, so that we can pull the data back down out of the replication repository. So now that the backups have been replicated, we can start to restore on the target side. So a Valero restore object has been created by the controller, and we can see there's one eight seconds ago that was created. The others are just left over from other migrations I've been doing. So if I grab for the namespace, I can see that the sock shop was actually restored on the target side. So now it's, uh, it's restoring the PVCs. And if I navigate to the project, get those PVCs, I can see that four of them were satisfied by Ceph. So at this point, I've actually changed my storage type. Now my um, PVs have been satisfied by Ceph instead of EBS. If I get the pods, the pods are starting to come up. These are the stage pods. So we've created some stage pods on the target side so that we can fill those PVs up with your source data that's been backed up to the replication repository. If we sit here and watch for the pods, we'll see that the stage pods are being terminated because the data has been moved. And copied to be specific and we're waiting on those to ensure that they've been now we've started to create the final restore which uh, is going to pull in the kubernetes objects so that's where we'll get our deployments and you can see we've got our deployments starting to be created and they're being scaled up and we're pulling down all of our images so that we can launch all the pods. So now that all my pods are running, I'm going to grab the routes. So you can see that a new route was created for my um, sock shop on my OpenShift 4 cluster. And if we navigate to that in my browser, we've landed on the sock shop. And that concludes the uh, example migration via a UI in MTC uh, 131. Thank you very much.